প্রায় ফাইভ ইয়ার্স হয়ে গেছে আরও কাম করা আমার লগর আরও কলিক আছেন প্রায় চার বছর তিন বছর ইলা আছেন বাট আমি ওপেনিং স্টাফে তারার লাগে ওপেনিং টাই কাম করলাম তারার লগে এবং এই যে তারার লগে যে আমরা ব্যবহারটা সুন্দর কমাই স্টাফে আর ম্যানেজমেন্টের বোঝা যান না কেউ আমরা বস কেউ স্টাফ সব আমরা মিলিয়ে সুন্দরভাবে কাম করলাম অবশ্যই শরীর বাইরে কাম করতে আমার ভালো লাগে এবং তাই ফ্রেন্ডলি মানুষ যেগুলো তো সহযোগিতা লাগলে তাই না ইয়া হেল্প হয় হেল্প হয় আর বিভিন্ন দরকার দরকার তাই পাই আর আমরা So it's great to see a clip, a clip that's fantastic and successful. A business person who's not just a person who's worked really hard, but a person who is a very successful entrepreneur. So it grates me great pleasure to introduce Sharif Islam to our show today. Assalamu alaikum Assalam. and welcome to our show. My pleasure. So it's great to see us, a very successful business that you do. Um, so tell me a little bit about it, what it is. Okay, well basically it is... Um, a, a, well, it's, Uh, buffet restaurant okay right to uh, mention in the simplest uh, uh, way um, but yeah we do um, outside catering as well but uh, in a nutshell it's a buffet restaurant with desserts we specialize in desserts which is hence the name feast and mishti so have a feast and then have a mishti feast and mishti and as our show of islamics explained that mainly is a dessert place as well but the good thing about this business is it doesn't cater for just one criteria but it caters for many different types in his business. So let's ask him a few questions how he became successful today. So, Mr. Sharif Islam, how did you become very successful in, in your business today? Well, the main thing would, would be I've got a very good team behind me. Okay, so my partners, um, in terms of family and stuff like that, so you need all that. And, and first and foremost, you know, uh, success from, comes, uh, comes from uh, Allah the Almighty. Um, how we started off was we looked at the location we looked at the the premises and uh, we looked at the people we're doing business with and our clientele as well so who you you will be providing the service you know providing everything matches and everything goes hand in hand you know i don't see any business to not be successful um so yeah so that, that's what that's pretty much what it is it's great it's great to hear that you know you have loads of motivation behind you yeah. um obviously look allah has been an inspiration oh, and a blessing to you as well alhamdulillah definitely so on that sense what we're going to do is we're going to look at another clip right of uh the employees and your friends that you call who work yeah. with you and the people who make the things work in your place really it's, it's whole big family absolutely that's so how we call it. family let's call them family definitely. I think that's the right word for 100%. them definitely <laughs> so let's have a look at the screen and let's look at the next clip that we've seen of what they have to say কোয়ালিটি পালা এবং সার্ভিসটা পালা খুব দ্রুত কাস্টমার সার্ভিস পাই লাই এবং বাংলাদেশের সব কিছু ইনো আছে একবারে মিষ্টি থাকি লাগাইয়া পরোটা লাগাইয়া ব্রিথিং গরু মাংস হালিম এগুলা হালিম মাংস খুব ভালো পায় পরোটা লাগে খাইতো এগুলা সব কিছু মিলে জিলাপি লাগাইয়া মিলে ফার্মার্সের মধ্যে আমরা যে একটা বাঙালি রেস্টুরেন্ট করছি এই রেস্টুরেন্টের ভ্যারাইটি আছে গ্রামীণ খানা আছে ভ্যারাইটি আছে ও কারণে মানুষের মন হইব দেশের কথা আর দেশের ঐতিহ্যটা তুলিয়া ধরতে গিয়া আমরা মেইন এসব রক্ত অনেক দিন যদি কিছু কাস্টমার আইয়া তাকা জায়গা থাকে অনেক কাস্টমার আছে এরা লগে পরিচয় যায় সম্পর্ক হয়ে যায় আর সম্পর্ক খারাপ তারা দেখতে পারে না বিদায় এই কাস্টমারগুলোরে আমরা দড়ি রাখতাম পারলাম সো 
it's very warming to see that obviously the people that work within your business mm. specified a few specific topics really. So it's service, yeah. quality, yeah. Um, it's the, the teamwork that they do pretty much in, in, in how they do it. And they also said that you get your hands dirty as well oh, at yeah. the same time. Oh, so gotta do that. shall we find out obviously what it is that brings that service and that quality in Feast and Mystery today. So Mr. Sharif Islam, again, I'd like to ask you, what is it that you give so specifically that your service is uh, high quality? Ah, love. Yeah. <laughs> we love our business and we love to serve. And mainly, majority of our customers are people who own restaurants. So these are people who are in the service industry already. So these are people who've done a good hard days of service and they, they, they come to us. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays are the busiest days. Reason being is because most restaurant workers and you know, owners, they have the, those days off. You know, Saturdays, uh, Fridays and Saturdays are the busiest days for them. Um, so we love, we love to serve. We love to acquaint with our customers we build a relationship with them and that's pretty much what's you know we, we know the names they know our names and this is what it is so if you don't love what you do you shouldn't do it absolutely so to our viewers hopefully you've uh, uh, pretty much catched all of that it comes down to love and affection in what you do mm. it's pride it's joy it's not just joy it's not just pride it's the effort and the dignity and the respect that you get from your customers so coming back to uh, your business again I'd like to ask you, when did you start the business and why this business? Well, this particular one um, has been um, in service for the last five years. So, like I said, we've, we've, I've been in the restaurant trade. Um, I've been in other trades as well, right? I like to call myself a, a jack of all trades, master of none, but jack of all <laughs> trades. <laughs> I haven't mastered anything quite, you know, uh, immensely yet. but. Yeah, so, um, yeah, about five years now. Five years we've been uh, operating and we cater, you know, outside catering as well. We cater for parties and stuff like that. Um, and what we like to say is when people come in, we like to say that we, 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 you know, we provide from starters to desserts. So from starters to desserts and in between you've got shakes and lassies and all kinds of, you know, grilled items. Um, so, you know, you can't go wrong if you come to Feast and Mishti. You could be, there could be five people come in. Say, for example, you go to a kebab place, right? There's only kebabs available. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, you come to Feast and Mishti, uh, you know, five friends come in, and we got on the menu, we got like friends meal and stuff like that, right? We got something called Feast Alone as well. So, you know, someone can just go for a, for, by themselves. Um, but you come to Feast and Mishti with five people, someone can have a cup of tea. Someone can have, um, you know, uh, some desserts, mishti, for example, kala jam, gulab jam, right? Oh, or a rush malai. And then someone can just go for a whole, you know, a full on buffet, right? And then someone else can say, well, you know what, I'm going to have some tandoori chicken. I don't feel like going for the buffet today, right? So because there's a lot of food. And when people leave, they say, you know, we're full. And I say, well, I've done my job That's well it. then. Because <laughs> yeah, we don't want anyone to go home empty. So this is the, the concept is, and in the daytime, someone can come in and the main thing is their pockets will not be empty so much. Fantastic. To be honest with you, it's actually made me pretty hungry, to be honest. Um, <laughs> you should so, visit. Uh, yeah, I must, uh, I, mu I must say I must visit one day and hopefully our viewers who's been listening today and watching us, so hopefully will be visiting oh, yeah. uh, your place as well. So as, as a businessman, is there any, every, every business faces a difficulty. Absolutely, yeah. Have you faced any difficulty like this recently? Oh yeah, we always face difficulties. You just have to overcome those difficulties. You know, you fall down, you just gotta get yourself up. Um, I've got about 25 staff, 25 to 26 staff in, 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 it's a small company, right? And then you've got departments, okay? So we got a, a mystery factory right at the back. They just produce mishti, right? Um, not only do we produce, you also supply, we're one of the licenses, license holders, to supply mishti uh, uh, to other premises. And then we've got uh, our own, you know, sort of food kitchen. And then you've got a, a bar in the front, which is not a bar with, you know, alcohol and stuff, but we call it a, a bar counter because we like serve- Like Yeah, yeah, but, but we, well, we do that. It's like another kitchen, to be honest, because we, you know, serve, you know, chana, piazzi, uh, all kinds of snacks. So you've got a f quite, quite a few different departments and we've got allocated personnels on those departments. 
So you got the floor manager over there, you got the kitchen manager, you got the mishti section, you know, the chef and the manager. And then overall, I'll look after everything. When something goes wrong, then I'll, I'll probably jump onto someone. But otherwise, you know, everything goes quite smoothly uh, up until now. But yeah, every fa you know business faces difficulties. And if it doesn't face difficulty, you're probably doing something wrong. You, you, you have to overcome it. Fantastic. You have to overcome it. Well, thank you for uh, concluding that in, in a, such a great way. And hopefully it's made yourselves understand as well how an overcome is not a difficulty. Mm. It's a part of a business. It's how you deal with that situation. Yeah. Now, for us and for everybody who come out there, for new people who are looking to do in a business, we wonder, can we do that? But we see these people who are successful. It hasn't happened overnight. So that's why I would like to come back to another question and ask you, you're, you call it a family, you call it love, you, you call it a lot of affection, it's a unity within mm. your business. Mm. But what type of boss are you? Right, okay, well, like I said, um, and if you do call yourself a family, right, you've got to have authorities, okay, authoritative figures. Um, so the kind of management, there's, uh, from my understanding and whatever I've studied, there's four types of management, right? One of them is called parentalistic management, okay? I think it's parentalistic or paternalistic, anyway, I think it's, <laughs> let's just call it parentalistic management, where you would consult with your staff, Okay, so something needs to be done. There's two ways. I could just say, well, you know what? It needs to be done, do it like this. Or I could say, well, this is something that needs to be done. How do we do it? So I consult with them and they'll give me some ideas, you know, because at the end of the day, they have to do the work. And if they do the work, they have to be happy with doing the work. So if any task, we got a, we got a, a cleaning schedule which starts from Thursday to Sunday. So we got, uh, you know, stages of cleaning. So before anyone starts cleaning, we say, you know what, have something to eat, have a cup of tea, you need to call home or something, <laughs> right? Um, and then how do we do that? And, and then they'll give us the ideas. They'll, you know what, Shori Bay, let's do this, let's move all the chairs today, right? Get the scraper, you know, people have, some people have <laughs> left chewing gums on the floor, for That's example. Good, yeah. Let's get all that off and then we'll bleach the floor and, you know, we'll, we'll close one department uh, with a divider and we'll do that, the chairs and the, uh, and the tables. So parentalistic management seems to work because you're consulting with them rather than just telling them, you know what, you do this, you do that. And people are not so happy from my experience. Um, so I think my father was a, was a man when I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm okay, uh, probably no, going off the topic fine. here. No, absolutely. Yeah. But since we're talking about family, my father was a man who used to consult with us, you know. All right. We've got a bride for your older brother. How, how do we go about doing it? You know, rather than saying, he was never a man, just say, well, it's my decision. I've made it my, my mind up, you know, boom. And that's what is going to happen. So, and after, I take, I respect my father a lot. He's passed away, but I, I take a lot from him. And um, I think maybe one of my, you know, reasons of success is because I, I do, you know, hold him as a role model. And the good thing about any business is, is unity. It's not being a boss in a specific way, really. It's about dedication in how you deal with the people that work with you. So what I want to ask you is, is this, it must be a secret to your success. Not so much a secret, um, but there is um, a philosophy that I follow um, when it comes to business, because business is not a, 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 an easy aspect of life, right? Uh, you know, a lot of businesses fail. And the reason they will fail are, uh, will be because of the puzzles which you don't put together. Something that I follow, which is called the four W's, right? Okay, so I will mention it, um, right? So when it comes to the four W's, uh, it, it will be who is one of them, who you do business with, right? Where, that's a key factor, where, where you're doing the business Absolutely. with, right? Um, what kind of business you're doing, right? And when you start the business, when because when could be a major major factor as well. Like for example, let's go. When does, it's not in every places, but in Whitechapel uh, or Tower Hamlets, you know, we've got things happening every once in a while, right? So you just got that get that opportunity for that key time, and then you know provide that service, uh, and you know you, you 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 do the business. You provide the service. That right time, for example, we've got Miller's happening every once yeah. a year. 
you know, you've got the cross rail that happening. So that's a big win. When that happens, we've got to, you know, sort of uh, look at what kind of customers are going to come in and so forth. So these four W's, if you follow it, the, the main three are, you know, who, uh, what, and where you do the business, right? So th these are quite important. And if you get those four or five things, I mean, people have different, different philosophies, right? But as long as you've got a kind of like a method, and if you get those things you know, in place, then it's, it's, it shouldn't go wrong. It shouldn't really go wrong. Absolutely. And it's a great thing that you mentioned the four W's because it's actually something that they teach these days in mm. business school. Mm. Mm. It's an actual way of marketing, promotion. It's a start of a business. So as you mentioned the four W's, what I'd like to do is also ask you a little bit about your childhood. Okay. Um, because you seem to have the knowledge regarding the where, what, when um, mm. philosophy. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it'd be great to hear for our viewers as well out there, our young generations who are looking to do something as well. If we go back to that, my father um, came in the late 50s, right? I think he came on a ship or something or some kind of um, <laughs> yeah, vessel. Right, so, and then we came in 1979, right? So late... This is the early 80s, right? So this is when I, when, when I grew up and there was a lot of, lot of um, let's say, you know, ups and downs, racism, stuff like that. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy growing up. So I went to school and, uh, you know, by the time I was in my teens, it would be the early 90s, okay? Um, that's when I started sort of work experience and, you know, getting the gist of the real world. So my brother um, and the family have been in the restaurant business from, you know, from, from a very early stage, as if most people were. And uh, what he used to say, do to me was he used to say, well, you know what, um, come for the weekends, okay? Come for the weekends, you're studying, that's fine, but come for the weekends and, you know, just learn what I do and do a bit of, you get some, you know, money, uh, cash in hand, pocket money, if you like. So yes, so basically um, I went in the tr restaurant trade, so that was, Apart from uh, paper rounds, when I was 13, apart from that, that was one of the first thing I, I did. So I went to the restaurant business, started uh, in the kitchen, okay? <laughs> he, he put me in the kitchen, so we used to peel potatoes and onions, okay? And didn't know anything about the business at all. They didn't know anything about the, uh, you know. So learned, I liked the food, okay? Which probably got me interested a bit more. The food was <laughs> brilliant. Um, and then after a while I got into, he said, you know what, you, 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 you're a smart guy. Right, I like your dress sense and stuff like that. That's my brother and his partner. They say, you just come in the front, you know, because you'd probably be good with the customers. And I kind of like clicked with the customers. So, yeah, went in the front. Um, they used to have two businesses in the same road at that time, okay? Uh, and so I started off in, in, in one of the business, and then they, they shift me to another one, which was a few doors away. And um, so we started, I started off as a waiter, right? So I learned, you know, most of the drinks, the dishes, you know, because this, it's all new, it's all new to me, right? Because most of the dishes are named after some kind of city or something in India, right? <laughs> uh, you got Madras, Kashmir, Ceylon, <laughs> stuff like that, right? Chingiti Masala, by the way, is not really Indian, it's not really Indian dishes, it's catered for the white people. So, yeah, so if you talk about the childhood, how I learned about those things. Now, this is the way I picked up the Indian trade, okay? So I was about 14 or 15 years old, worked in the weekends, picked up the Indian trade. Childhood was not that easy. It was quite rough. We used to hang around um, in West London. There were, you know, loads of... Lo lo I mean, the, the, if you know the, the, in the 90s, it wasn't easy growing up, okay? There was a lot of, you know, uh, fights and, you know, uh, racism and stuff like that going up. So, in, you know, between all that, we kind of like had to, you know, hold on to, uh, you know, uh, everything else. And so I learned the restaurant trade and then I was studying at the same time. I also did a bit of uh, sociology uh, and also interior design, okay? So Feast and Mishti, most of it I designed it myself, you know, uh, it's probably a bit outdated now, but we, yeah, we're looking into developing, we actually looking at making it, you know, uh, extension, uh, making it bigger. So just going back to our viewers and hopefully that's giving you an inspiration mm -hmm. on how Mr. Sharif Islam has Gone from grafting from a very young age and, and learning many scopes and being brought up in the 90s. Um, I can say I've, I've, I've seen a little bit of that. I'm not going to give too much out, show my age, but um, definitely he, you know, he has nailed it where he needs to nail. And talking about family and how family have been a great motivation to him as well. So I'd like to ask you, mm. 
If there was a few tips that you could give to our future generation, what would they be? Okay, um, well, one of the tips would be um, you've got to love what you want to do, right? Because that will make you want to do and do more, right? So I don't know how many people would want to go in the restaurant you know, business or the, you know, the catering business. Um, the people are more academic now. People are, you know, um, have higher aspirations and stuff like that. Restaurant, something, restaurant business is something that, because I grew up with it, is something that I love. And there are other people that love it. I mean, you know, let's mention a few sort of Hollywood stars, like you've got Sylvester Stallone, you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger and people like that. They, they earn millions, but what do they do? They open up a restaurant, right? These are restaurant owners, by the way, yeah? So it's, it's something that you've got to love. Um, Tip-wise, do what you love, you know, be committed, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, give it your 100%, because... If you don't give it your hundred percent, then you'll always have that regret that you know maybe it could have been in such a way if I did you know give it my hundred percent. And because I didn't do it, it didn't happen. You know, so you'll all have, will always have that regret. Give it your hundred percent, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Move on to something else. But do what you like to do. It's great to hear some inspirational thoughts and ways of doing things. It's about hard work. It's about putting your effort in a hundred percent. So thank you to Mr. Sharif Islam again for coming on to our show and hopefully he will rejoin us one day uh, again on our show and give us some great tips. And we have a lot of things to look forward to as well in, in Feast and Misty about the expansion as well that uh, Mr. Sharif Islam has told us today and his other businesses. So to our viewers and to our young generation who was watching, I'd like to thank you all for coming and assalamu alaikum.